Alright guys, I want to be showing you how to uh, test a GM EGR valve. So, I downloaded a, uh, a manual that shows you pretty much everything and those are the, uh, the pinouts. And on the EGR valve, on some of them, uh, they'll have letters. Some of them don't. Like this one doesn't. But if you just remember, well on mine it's going in there like this. Uh, the one on the left is uh, A. And for this, uh, for all these tests, or for the uh, first one anyway, you need to have it connected and with your key on. Now this will test the uh, wiring and everything. And uh, actual EGR valve itself. So what you need to do first is uh, get your multimeter out, set it to DC volts, and on letter C you need to uh, back probe that and have your other lead on ground somewhere. It doesn't really matter, just a good ground. I'm going to put it on my battery, and with key on, on letter C, with the EGR valve connected, it needs to read between 0.6 and 0.9 volts, and here you can see it is. So our next step. is to remove the EGR valve from the intake manifold and manually induce the EGR valve to produce the entire range of the pin tool's position voltage values. So what you have to do now is take your multimeter. It's going to be kind of difficult to show you. Put it in there and then manually push the inside of the pencil. Now you gotta get a screwdriver and push it all the way down in there, but the maximum it says it's supposed to be is uh, uh, 4.5. And it needs to be pushing in just a little bit. It stays, and that's what you need to look for. And when you come out, it slowly drops and doesn't go back up or nothing. That's a little high. See, it's like it's kind of sticky. And uh, that's mainly just the inside of here. You need to uh, take and clean it out really good so it'll seat properly. But that's fine. So now we need to go by here. If your multimeter displayed a DC voltage above, wait, no. Okay. Okay. You need to go to test five here. This one is uh, verifying the EGR signal. Uh, remove the EGR valve from its base. The EGR valve, although removed from its base, must re re remain connected to its connector for this test. With the multimeter in DC volts mode, attach red multimeter lead of the multimeter to the C circuit of the EGR valve and the black to the negative. 
Oh, we already did that and verified 4.5 volts. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going back over this. I already did everything. I'm just showing you. So we need to go to test 7. Now here's where it gets kind of fun and interesting here. Uh, clogged intake manifold. Uh, what you want to do is you, you leave your EGR valve off and you start the engine. But uh, I already did that and what's supposed to happen is your if it's not clogged your engine will run rev up really really high or run really poor or you know or it won't even start at all in some cases and uh, if it does shut it off really quick and n the passages aren't clogged they're fine but if your engine runs really nice and smooth and doesn't bog or nothing without the EGR valve with this with this out uh, if it runs fine then uh, you got a problem with the passages going in through the intake that are clogged so you'll have to uh, take a coat hanger or some other uh, device and uh, jam in there to clear the path or you might have to remove the intake and uh, clean it so we're gonna go to the next step EGR all right, hang on. Idled no. If the engine started and idled very high or stalled, then this confirms that the EGR passages inside the plenum are not clogged. Your next step is to check the EGR pentle motor is getting power. Go to test two. Okay, now this one is testing the 12 volt circuit. Make sure it's getting 12 volts. Uh, so what you want to do there is your black one on the ground, and this can be out, or you don't have to have it connected. Um, with the key on, you have to probe letter E. So that would be this far left one here. Well, wrong one. And we get 13.4, so that's good. I got it on the battery charger anyway, so I don't run my battery down with the uh, ignition on. I want, you know, doing all these tests. So we know it's getting 12 volts now. So now we got to go to test eight. Alright, this one's a pretty easy one. EGR solenoid resistance. In test 2, you verified EGR solenoid is getting power 10 to 12 volts DC. The next step is to measure the resistance of the solenoid itself. Place your multimeter in ohms mode. Disconnect EGR's electrical connector. With the multimeter leads, measure the resistance across the EGR valve pins that connect to the wires labeled with the letter A and the letter E. If the EGR solenoid is okay, your multimeter should read 8 to 9 ohms.
Oh, I got it on the wrong one. There we go. That's a little high. It's at 10. But this is a Generation 1, OBD1, uh, EGR. Now, this is all based on OBD2 because it gives you EGR valve codes, PO, 401, 403, 404, and all that. Those are EGR valve codes. So mine might be a little different on the uh, ohms or the resistance, so. So if you don't read 8 to 9 ohms, or maybe give or take one, uh, I think it would be okay. But uh, any more than that, I would say it's probably bad. Okay. Multimeter registered the indicated ohms. This result tells you that the PGR solenoid is okay. So far, you have verified two important things. One, the EGR solenoid is getting powered, and two, the solenoid itself passes the resistance test. This leaves two possibilities for the PO403 DTC, and they are a problem with the, in the wire labeled with letter A between the EGR connector and the PCM connector, or the PCM is bad, although this is very rare. Um, In case 2, the multimeter did not register the indicated ohms. This tells you that the EGR solenoid is fried. Replacing the EGR valve will solve the EGR DTC, PO403.